Everything might not quite always fit together tightly But all we can do is take steps to see just how it might be Live and listen to each other sharing in this nice theme Doing the work of broccoli, feeling the joy of ice cream Hi, this is Mike Kaplan and you're listening to Broccoli and Ice Cream. Thank you so much for doing that. As you may know, an episode comes out for free each week right here, wherever you get your free podcast content. And a bonus conversation is available for a small contribution over at patreon.com slash Mike Kaplan. Thanks for considering contributing there to keep things going here, there, and everywhere. And in so doing, you will gain access to both halves of each conversation I have with my guests, the broccoli and the ice cream. For each week, I speak to a guest, a friend, an artist, a performer, a writer, a comedian, a musician, a podcaster, somebody who does some sort of work in the world as represented by broccoli and who experiences joy in their life as represented by ice cream. Today, that guest is Jessie Weyburn. Jessie is a comedian and more. She has a podcast called Taking Dadplications, a biweekly podcast where she hires a dad at dadplications on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, she is at Eat My Glitter for her personal Instagram and Twitter. Uh, she hosts a she co-hosts a show called Prompt Night, a prom themed improvised stand up show on Monday nights at eight p.m. Pacific, eleven Eastern. Uh, look at her Instagram for details about that and other shows. And uh, I also asked her, in addition to her own projects, uh, if there are other projects and causes that she supports, and she said she supports another uh, a number of Patreon artists, including Kira Sims, who is a New York neo-futurist, a theatrical cause she supports as well. Uh, and I wanted just to second that. I love the neo-futurists, so check them out where you can online in life, if possible. And uh, she also adds, if people want a more traditionally uh, lucrative vocational organization to support, uh, she recommends Planned Parenthood, and I do so that as well. Uh, I recommend following Jesse, listening, watching, engaging. Uh, I was a guest on Taking Dadplications. We talk about it. It's a really fun show, and uh, I'm happy to know Jesse and to introduce her to you via this conversation. Please enjoy. <laughs> Here we go. Ready, set, podcast. That's not how I start, but maybe it, <laughs> maybe it is this time. Hello, Jesse Weyburn. Thank you so much for being a guest on my podcast and a friend in my life. How are you doing? Thank you, Mike. I am medium. Thank you. Sure, sure. Uh, how, how Have you ever been more than medium? If... We're honest, probably no, but there's been spikes and valleys. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been I've been more than medium. I've been less than medium. Oh, sh I guess that's what makes it medium. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My therapist told me I could make it medium, like not big, you know. Oh, did did they, <laughs> did they really? Yeah, they did. They said one time um, in a session they had gone on vacation. And um, they came to New York when I was still living in the Bay Area, um, the San Francisco Bay Area. I've come to learn that it is arrogant to say the Bay Area. And I'm not, I don't identify as arrogant. Anyway, so um, uh, they went to New York. They said they went to, you know, like a, a medium uh, comedy club, um, not a big one, not a small one. And I was like, well, do you think I could? I could do it. Do you think I could be in there? Did you see me on stage? And they were like, yeah, I could totally see you on stage. So I was like, cool. My therapist thinks I can make it medium. I I really like the phrase making it medium. I mean, yeah. that that could be an album title for you. I don't, oh. I don't know if you're already considering it. Uh, but now, now I am. Please do. So, uh, I mean, if you wish. I so we know each other from the the longest conversation we've had before this was on your podcast, which is right. called Taking Dadplications. Uh, yes, it is. Where if I correct me if I'm wrong, you uh, you have guests on who are essentially interviewing uh, humorously and I mean in with sincerity, but uh, to, to for the position of your dad because you did not have a standard. Uh, dad situation growing up is that right you nailed it that yep 
I uh, didn't have a dad, so I'm hiring. <laughs> <laughs> and and you also are a comedian, uh, in addition to mm-hmm. having this podcast. And so now, uh, the first question that I often ask is, when you were youngest, uh, what were the ways in which you created art or you know exhibited manifested creativity uh, in ways like did you always write did you perform sing act dance draw and did those uh, whatever ones of those you did uh, how did they if they did lead you to where you are uh, creating things today the answer is yes to all of those things. Oh, great. Things. Okay, next question. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I would say that probably I was a performer from the get-go. I went to stage camp and clown camp, and I got into chorus and plays, and I would make, make up dances with my cousins at Thanksgiving from an early age. I think one of them had like a play school karaoke machine and we would sing and um, and one time I did a strip tease for when I was eight. I did a strip tease for my my favorite of my mom's friends. I don't know where I learned to do that, but I was like, he'd probably like that. So <laughs> um, I have run the gamut of performance in my life. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. Uh, and I know also at, we're recording this uh, today on a Friday, uh, mm-hmm. and it it will be released uh, soon, if not today. Uh, but tomorrow, as of this recording, I know you are and you're starting doing uh, you you create dance in the world as well. Is that? Oh, so okay. So by day, I'm a stage manager. Ah. Um, I see. And Go on. So I'm stage managing this dance piece. I have no p- responsibility for how they move their bodies. I just make sure they are where they are supposed to be at the time we agreed upon. And then they have the things that they need to do the things that they agreed to do before we started all of this. And I, uh, I, did, I got into stage management because... When I got into college for theater, I was not able to be cast because I was in theater in the South in the early 2000s. And so the kind of misogynistic through line of like, you have to have a certain look to play certain roles was still present. And I was not castable because I have too, spe- excuse me, I have too specific a look. And uh, that look is small Jewish girl (laughs) and not ingenue and so I couldn't get cast in anything and I was like well I'm not doing a theater degree to not do theater what is there else to do and they said well we need an assistant stage manager for this behemoth of a show can you like take notes and I was I was like girl I'm in college yes I can take notes (laughs) and so I started doing that and I realized very quickly that it was a job nobody wanted to do and also that was the highest paid job in theater and meant that I would have job security and then I just kind of rolled into stage management sort of eschewing my original dream of doing stand-up from an early age like up from an early age I wanted to be a comedian but because I had been fed this idea that I wasn't uh m- like consumable by the masses then I did I was like well I guess I'll just do the backstage stuff but yes I am stage managing a dance piece on Little Island and it is <laughs> it'll it's a free event and it is uh Tomorrow, Saturday, August 21st, 2021, uh, August 28th, 2021, and September 4th, 2021. Well, definitely it'll this, this conversation will be available to people's ears before some of those dates. And also, okay. uh, I imagine, after those dates as well. So future time travelers, please, uh, those are the dates <laughs> to aim for. Um, yeah. And so that's... What a wild thing that is that they're like, you know, I mean, there are people that look like you because you're a person. uh, So there's at least one. uh, Right. And I mean, I'm glad 
I'm glad that you, I'm like, oh, what happened? Did you ever do stand up like you wanted to? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got drawn yes. in. Well, how, how did you co- come to overcome the, uh, the feeling that you weren't either allowed to or encouraged to do it? That's a good question. It's been a slow unlearning of these kind of brainwashy things from my childhood and into adulthood. The media feeds you and like people around you, you know, unsupportive, kind but unsupportive family members, not meaning to to thwart your efforts or whatever to to move forward in your dreams. But but really, don't you want to do something more lucrative? <laughs> um, don't you want to do something more surely successful in a conventional, you know, uh, perspective? And no is the answer. I just want to entertain people and be sometimes the center of attention and um, offer my perspectives because according to my Zodiac as an Aquarius, I'm usually not thinking like other people. So I feel like I should share it. Anyway. Um, R- quick have, question about yes. that Zodiac thing. So as, is it that all Aquarii don't think like other people and then – but are they thinking like themselves? Like, are all the Aquarii? Uh, um, the plural of Aquarius is Aquarians. Oh, I didn't know. I'm so sorry. Just it's okay. It's it is on, it's like um, Latin in name only, mm-hmm. and um, then we get into the woo woo side, and we call ourselves Aquarians. I'm not supposed to believe in or like the zodiac as an Aquarian, so I am already against the grain and thinking differently. From other Aquarians. <laughs> by buying into it, I understand. Yes. By buying okay. into it. Yeah. But um, I'm more like by buying, you know. But Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't live my whole life by the Zodiac, but I am very interested in the interconnectivity of you, me, and everything. And it's a nice framework to kind of look through and see patterns that other people have noticed and see if that pertains to me. And sometimes it does. And it's like, ooh, that's spooky. And sometimes it doesn't. And I'm like, oh, that's garbage. (laughs) And, you know, like it's a healthy dose of skepticism mixed with like uh, appreciation. And um, sure, it doesn't. It does, I'm not like betting numbers by the zodiac, but I am. I'm also not a gambler. Yeah, wouldn't you want to uh, <laughs> do something more lucrative than bet numbers on the the zodiac? Honestly, it would be more lucrative than <laughs> comedy. <laughs> but you, we've already established you don't want to do something Correct. more lucrative than comedy. You want to do something no. exactly as lucrative as comedy. So, right. my, pardon my interruption. Please continue. <laughs> I so. You interrupted a thought that I cannot retrieve. Can you remind me what you were at, what we were, what train we were on before? Oh, sure. I believe you were on the general path of uh, unlearning. Uh, oh, and the things yeah. your oh, family sure. was telling you. I... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did I get to comedy? How did I actually start doing it? Yeah. Um, I. Well, there was a lot of. Uh, I honestly probably. It's going to sound however it's going to sound. But the Me Too movement mm. um, kind of re- like really crystallized supporting other women and um, women doing the things that they dream to do and not and not on the with permission from other people or men specifically. And I. Uh, I was like, oh, right, I have hopes and dreams that have been kind of quelled by this patriarchal, you know, brainwashing. Maybe I should be the feminist I say I am and do the things that I say I want to do. At least try them. I am not a coward. And I just had this, you know, I think I was like, I don't know, early 30s and was like oh well if I'm gonna get old and not give a fuck I better start practicing now um 
it, yeah, so that when I get really old and don't give a fuck, I'm like really good at it. <laughs> and <laughs> um, I had uh, kind of a tumultuous time that I just needed more than therapy. You know, I just needed a place that I could say things that I couldn't say to my therapist, which is an interesting concept. Hmm. Um, and uh, so I so I was like, you know what? I'm going to do stand up and a friend of mine because I am like very one on one conversationally funny and people are like, oh, gosh, you're so funny. Do you do stand up? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Um, so once you start doing stand up, you're no longer funny. That's, that just happens. Um, and so I did stand up and here's the messed up thing about when you start stand up, when you start, everybody is like super supportive. They love that you're starting. It's your first open mic. And they, um, they're just like, yeah, you go girl. And it's regardless of whether you're funny you kill and so it's like uh it's like a drug and a drug and the drug hooks you and then after that you're just chasing the dragon which is like such a trope but that's real i don't know um so that's how i got it. that's how i did it i i got tired of being a uh sideline feminist i wanted to get in there <laughs> Sure. I like the idea that uh, you're like, women can do anything they want except me. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely like everybody do what they want. I'll, yeah, root root for whoever, you know. Um, and that's kind of like this. It's been this unfurling of, oh, I'm, I'm actually only helping other people with their visions. Do I, do I have anything to offer? Am I creative? I feel like I am. I used to be. And then the weird thing about college is it just kind of shut down and I had to learn how to um, support, only support other people with my creativity and my problem solving, my resourcefulness. And, and it's been this wonderful, like I said, unfurling of learning my own path back to creativity for myself. Yeah. That is wonderful. Uh, now, I'm not aiming to ask you to, you know, perform any bits in okay. this question. But the I, I'm intrigued by the way you, the dichotomy of, you know, things you would and wouldn't say to your therapist and then the things, like, what are the kinds of things, if you can say, that you're like, I need another place to say this thing yeah. that's not therapy? Oh, man. So, hope my therapist doesn't listen. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, we can so... put this behind the paywall if we need to. <laughs> Great. Who knows? They might be a big fan of yours. Mm -hmm. um, they like comedy. So, uh Okay, so like I did never really talk about my relationship with substance use mm. and or abuse with my therapist, which is like a weird place not to talk about that. Um, I would talk more about like trauma and um, things that led to substance use and or abuse. And uh, so like on stage, and I know you're not trying to get me to say a bit, <laughs> but like I'm a, I um work best in examples so uh, one old bit that I don't use anymore because it's too it's like I've grown out of it um it was very close to when I quit drinking and smoking um I quit drink so how it goes uh, I quit drinking in mm -mm, I can't remember <laughs> I, I quit smoking in February I quit drinking in April uh, I got broken up with in June so I can't quit I I can't quit doing drugs or else I'll get home oh ah, nope hold on I believe right. in you yeah you believe thank you I'm gonna I haven't I didn't I'm not properly warmed up uh so all right so I quit drinking and I quit smoking and ultimately uh lost my job and um 
some other, oh, got broken up with. And uh, so I can't quit doing drugs or else I'll get homeless. Uh, that's the punchline. It's it's really great to bomb your own <laughs> joke. Uh, well, but yeah, you've grown so, out of it. I have grown out of it. I haven't, I thought about it. I thought about that bit the other day because like I'm so, I am three years sober and three years not smoking cigarettes and um, if I'm honest, California sober. Uh, so I don't like that phrase, mm-hmm. but it is a, a nice euphemism for, I yeah, I, I do weed. Um, <laughs> so uh, it's nice to be far from kind of a life experience that you need, you, like one needs to process like, oh, those things don't hurt the same way anymore, so I don't need to make fun of them. That's that makes a lot of sense. That's very meaningful. Uh, it's also when you were talking about how like not talking about substance abuse in therapy, but rather addressing the you know traumas and root causes of like uh, yeah. you're like um like imagine if your therapist is like why why haven't you told me about any of your symptoms? We've only been dealing with the root causes. <laughs> Like <laughs> as if you're going to be in trouble for only talking about the uh, the direct yeah. items. Well, that's oh man, that's that's rich because uh, like you know you it, co- comics who go to therapy often are trying to make their therapists laugh, and this is sort of a riff on that where I'm trying to like heal things I'm not telling them about by telling them about other things I, it's like uh, I'm trying to do their work for them or I don't wow yeah I, I guess I mean how long have you been going to therapy 10 years and have with the same person or different people same person I okay so uh, the inciting incident to go to therapy this I have been to therapy several times in my life and this uh this particular stretch this of, season uh, uh, this decade um brought to you by uh, a, a series of intense and unfortunate events in close su- and rapid succession uh I um lost my job uh r- Found out I was, uh, no, lost my job, met my father, found out I was pregnant, had an abortion, he died, and then I had a, like, a follow-up procedure f- because the, I, my body didn't, he- I'm, like, one of the rare people who are allergic to abortion, and it's, there was complications. Wow. So, like, this was all in the span of five months, and so I was like, ah, God, he's some help <laughs> and um i started with one therapist and he was like you know what i'd rather go work in a psych ward <laughs> and um and he handed me off to another therapist who has been just like so great so great um and like i can say that string of events without bursting into tears that's how great this therapist <laughs> is uh well, yeah, thank, so, thank you for yeah. sharing all that. And uh, it's a lot. Yeah, I mean, I'm I appreciate it. Uh, your th- that you can share and that you are. I mean, it would be also fine if you uh, broke down in tears. It would be great podcasting. But uh, <laughs> I, it's not what I'm aiming for. I'm holding for. back. <laughs> I'm, yeah. Um, and did you say when he died? That is the your father died. Or- oh. Uh, yes, my father who art in heaven. Yes. Um. Uh, hellowed be his name. Um. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, so like this is the this is the very same father who has inspired the podcast because I didn't grow up with him. I met him actually on my birthday. Uh, Which birthday? The twenty seventh birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, and if. If we're going to do recalls here, uh, callbacks, it, it astrologically was very um, 
profound because it was my Saturn's return, which is when Saturn is in the same place in the sky when you were born and a lot of kind of rebirth kinds of things happen. You change jobs, you, uh, you reassess things in life. And for me, I meet a parent. So, um, oh yeah, a parent. Uh, he was there probably right around, you know, when you were born, give or take a year. Uh, right. He wasn't present at any point. For, he was he was there for the miracle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then then there was a lot of uh, a lot of like this. This is with this where it gets a little sticky because this is like my mom's story. And sure. I can't really like like I, t- I wrote a solo show actually about um, that five months and um, getting into, like, am I even allowed to tell the story of my conception? Because it's my conception, but it happened to my mom, and it's, like, not cool, right? Um, and, like, when I tell it, it's like, am I throwing my mom under the bus by existing? Um, huh. Have you talked yeah. to your mom about this topic? You know, we don't talk um, because the there's a lot of like she deals with mental illness in a way that uh i disagree with which is like not dealing with it and um has i we don't have a a smooth relationship sure it as i say i i sometimes say um it requires a lot of emotional gymnastics and it's like olympic level emotional gymnastics and i'm at best jv ha. like i'm not that great with that so um we uh don't have a very frequent communication it's really only when like terrible things happen in the family that we communicate and um like I appreciate that we care enough about each other to tell each other when, like, oh, here are our tears. Um, like, someone dies. Uh, yeah. But that's it. That's all That's all we can do. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's fresh. My uncle just died. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. His funeral was yesterday. And I'm mad about it because it's it was preventable. It was COVID, and it was just like, you know, I have been saying this. Like, he um, was such a creative person. Like, he was an inventor and, like, super funny and, cr- and big prankster. And, gosh, like, this is the most boring way for him to choose to die. I mean, I know he didn't choose it, but, like, on a, in a way he did because he chose not to get vaccinated and this is where my political whatever it's not political is health public health um if you're listening and it's still the pandemic get vaccinated um so he did not get vaccinated and he you know participated in group activities with other unvaccinated people and we know how viruses pass so um yeah. It just is such a like such a uncreative way to go. I really feel like he could have written that better, you know. I uh, I understand. I uh, I'm really sorry. Thanks. Um I appreciate that. I can feel the energy where I'm like I'm trying to make fun of this and cope with comedy and it's like actually this is really sad. <laughs> um yeah. So. Yeah. Uh I, I understand uh, historically comedy equals tragedy plus time. And uh, yeah. one day is a small unit of time. It's just, it's like you have to have like an order of time, you know? Like it's not just like a little bit of time. You have to have more time to make things be funny. Like, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, I I can hear. So, uh I'm sorry, and uh, I guess, oh, I guess that's I guess there's no end. It's just I I am sorry. Uh, Thank you. Oh, I mean, there's so many complex you know 
like emotions is like you know if we've learned nothing from the the Pixar movie Inside Out, uh, Oof. that you know joy and sadness can coexist. You know, like yeah. humor and sincerity uh, as well. So you can both you know love your uncle, be mad at him, uh, yeah. make fun of the situation. You know, yeah, be it. It can it can all be in in various. Well, and that's what's so great about the therapy that I have um, paid a lot of money for because <laughs> I um, I'm not judgmental of any of these things. Like I'm, uh, I can let my feelings come up and pass through and recognize that it's a wave and it's not like how I'll feel forever or, you know, um, that it's not uh, it's not who I am. It is just a reflection of what I feel and feeling is fleeting. So um, it's it's okay. Like, I'm okay with feeling the big waves. I'm all right with it. Uh, I'm glad. <laughs> Thanks. I'm glad you're, you're good with feeling the big waves because yeah. uh, it sounds good. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, before we conclude this portion of our conversation, uh, mm-hmm. the final questions I uh, I like asking, uh, they'll be th- sort of a three-part question, and you don't have yeah. to answer any of them. They're all just for if you want to. Uh, the first, w- first I say is just because sometimes people feel uh, a pressure to be like, oh, God, I don't have one. Uh, but <laughs> the first question is, is there anything that we started talking about that you didn't get to say as much as you would have wanted to? Uh, because we got uh, tangented off in another direction. Uh, so if there's anything mm. nagging and being like, oh, I didn't finish answering that. Like, again, there, if you're like, oh, no, I don't, I don't think there is one. The second, second part, you can sort of let these all uh, roll over you like waves as well. Uh, I don't know why I think about waves, you know. Uh, who knows? <laughs> uh, just, just like waves. We're all kind of like waves. Um, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, we're, we'll soon be waving goodbye. But... Uh, is there anything else about your life? Like we've only known each other a short while and you've known yourself longer than you've known me. Is there anything yeah. about you that I didn't even know to ask about with respect to your life as a, a creative person, a person doing the the work that you're doing uh, on yourself, in your life, in art, in, you know, for professional or personal purposes? Uh, and yeah. the third specific question is, did you want to say anything more about your taking dad applications podcast? And cause I think you did start saying like, that's when I came to that and in discussing the, that five month chunk of your life. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So we'll start with the podcast. It comes out every other Monday. The next one is coming out this Monday. Okay. <laughs> uh, that way. <laughs> um, uh, it is the the podcast is uh, a joy and a delight, and it is similar in kind of, um, you know, earn, earnest I- interest in the life experience of the interviewee um, in th- the way that I feel you are approaching your podcast um, without the pressure of, uh, d- you know, trying to get a job. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I And I was, uh, I very much enjoyed being a guest on your podcast. Oh, thank you. I have very much enjoyed our, our interview. It was great. Um, and for those listening, I did hire my, my dad. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess to answer your first question, um, it's not anything nagging, but it's actually a question for you, um, or really more like a, it's a piece of gratitude. Um, I just want to say thank you for being an open mic. Um, mm. and I'm sure you've gotten that <laughs> before. Um, I thank but... you. And my very first, uh, album I created before I was even pursuing comedy specifically as a, I was a musician and I recorded an album over the course of 12 weeks every Tuesday at an open mic night in Whoa. Cambridge, Massachusetts, and I entitled the album Open Mic Night. Uh, nice. I'll have to dig that up. And is it available? Uh, great question. It's it's not publicly available, but it is privately available. 
uh, because it it must come with disclaimers. Oh, okay, okay, right. Um, you got my email address. Mm-hmm. All right, mm-hmm. so cool. Um, and then to answer your second question, um, other thing, other work that I do artistically, I'm an avid knitter. Mm. I uh, crochet. I do, fiber arts in general are a big deal to me. I have a tattoo of a ball of yarn. Um, I feel like if like if I say I'm a comic and not also a knitter, that just isn't a full enough picture. Um, but I also uh, like you don't we don't know each other super well yet, but I'm very looking forward to the longevity of our friendship and learning more about each other. Um, but I am a, a really into cooking and um, uh, music. So those are those are my they're not hobbies. They're like passions so oh i yeah. i thank you for the the distinction uh well and does that i i think that'll also lead us nicely into the next half of our conversation which will begin for us right after this and for other people uh i mean whenever whenever they want if if they want <laughs> but uh it could have been even before depending like that people can listen to things <laughs> in any order that they want to so but before we go, I'll say I'll ask one last question, a very specific question. As somebody who is into the fiber arts as you are, uh, and this is going to be kind of sincere, but mainly a joke masquerading as sincere. Uh, it's I'm going to be telling a joke and offering a joke, but it's in the form of a question. Uh, so as somebody who is a comedian into the fiber arts, have you considered yourself uh, a knit wit? Listen, okay, I, <laughs> the first show I produced it was in yarn shops, mm. and I tried to incorporate knit wit into the title, and I was like, it's just too on the nose, and I, I have to be uh, smarter about this, so um, that show was called In Stitches. Mm. I mean, yeah. that's that's there as well. So nitwit uh, caused you on the nose woes. Yes, uh. yes. Um, nitwit is uh, it's also in the knitting community. It's like a brand. Ah. So I needed to be respectful and not steal somebody's name yeah. for my well, comedy show. I have uh, no such qualms uh, <laughs> <laughs> about saying it here. On this cool. podcast, uh, yeah. that's in fact M M Y Q. The way I spell my name is short for mine. Your qualms. Um, <laughs> oh, so that's good. I like that. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you for being here and sharing so openly and uh, uh, unexpectedly, vulnerably, perhaps uh, about so many things. Well, I guess. Thank you. I am. I just. I should have. I should have warned you. I'm just. This is what I am. I'm open, and uh, you're an open mic. I'm an open Jesse. So. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, no. No warning necessary. As long as you know. I don't. I don't want to overstep or pry. Uh, but if you, you know, I'll tell you. I'll tell you this last thing. Okay. Uh, I have a a safe that I that I have. It's like a a little safe that I've had since I was a kid that has a yeah. Uh, a one number combination. Uh, oh. if you, you just turn it to the number 15 and then press down the lever and then it opens. Or if you don't know what number it is, like if you ever need to open my safe and you don't remember that it's 15, you can just hold down the, the open button and then spin the knob. And then when it gets to the one that opens it, <laughs> it'll open because it's an only, only a one number combination. And I, I like I feel like there are some people that are like that for me, like that I am often like that, that, you know, holding down the open button. And right. and then if you meet somebody else who's also holding down the open button, then you can much sooner than you might otherwise uh, open and connect to each other. Yeah, that's, an, that's a very apt analogy metaphor i am i am like a safe like you can tell me anything uh and i'll keep it i'll keep it safe i'll probably forget it um you'll keep it what 
safe. Oh, great, right, right. <laughs> um, uh, but then, like, if you open me up as uh, this other compartment, maybe it's a two compartment safe. Oh, yeah. There's, like, stuff you can tell me. Um, um, and then, but then, like, I think people wish I, I think people I've been connected to, uh, like my ex husband, would not wish that I would be so vulnerable <laughs> and share just all my junk. You know, it's like, I don't know. Well, I'm just to them. Your junk is junk, but one person's junk is perhaps another person's trunk. Um, <laughs> I I was like, oh no, it's I, I I'm going somewhere very obvious. I had I had to take a turn. So, yeah. <laughs> but your your openness to me is a treasure. Oh, thank you. Uh, so thank you again for sharing. <laughs> Work of broccoli, feeling the joy of ice cream. You did it. You listened to me and Jesse Wayburn have this conversation. If you want to hear us have the rest of our conversation, head on over to patreon.com slash Mike Kaplan. Contribute a bit. You'll be able to hear my bonus chat with Jesse and also all of the second halves of all of the conversations I have with all of my guests. Also, of course, do follow Jesse at Eat My Glitter on Instagram and Twitter and at Dadplications on Instagram and Twitter for her podcast, Taking Dadplications. And uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Thank you for doing everything that you are doing. Uh, thank you forever and goodbye for now. I appreciate your listening. You have done a nice thing. And if you are so moved, thank you for rating and subscribing. Either way, your reference here will help us all keep thriving. Doing the work of broccoli, feeling the joy of ice cream.